Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create the Unity logo all in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created a new document, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And I've gone onto Google Images and searched for the Unity logo. And if you've never seen it before, this is the Unity logo and it's for a piece of game development software that I'm currently learning at the moment and it's incredibly complicated. But I thought this logo is quite interesting because it's a rather unusual logo at a rather unusual angle as well. So this exercise in this tutorial is really going to be about how we can manipulate this logo and create what is essentially quite complex using some more basic shapes and the thought process behind that. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's first go to view, make sure smart guides are switched on, snap to point is switched on and snap to pixel is switched off. And I'm actually just going to drag holding alt and shift to create a copy of this logo because we will be using that as a reference later. So if we then grab this logo, we need to look at this first and think what basic shapes can we identify within this? And we can then use those basic shapes to combine them together and create this more complex logo. So the first thing that I like to do with something like this is start rotating it. So I'm just going to grab from one of the corners and rotate. And pretty quickly with this one, we can see that actually if I rotate it a little bit to the right, actually the entire logo is symmetrical. In fact, if we drill down into it a little bit further, we can actually see that the entire logo is just made up of three arrows. Those are terrible lines. Oh my goodness, those are awful. But you can see it's just three arrows. So all we need to do is actually just create one of those arrows and repeat it two other times. In fact, we don't even need to do that. We just need to create half of an arrow because this main arrow at the bottom here in itself is symmetrical. Now, first of all, we're going to want to make sure that any vertical lines like this column here in our logo are perfectly straight. So we're just dragging this over to the edge of the artboard. Of course, our artboard is perfectly vertically straight on that left edge. So I'm just going to rotate this, try and get this into a position like this, where it looks pretty, pretty good, pretty straight and we can then move this back into the center of the artboard. And then when you're happy with its position, just select this object, go to object, lock, selection, just so we don't select it by mistake. Now creating this logo that is symmetrical, we can just grab the pen tool and we could pencil around the entire thing, but because this is symmetrical and we've identified that, doing it manually with the pen tool is gonna to leave a lot of room for inaccuracy there. So we're going to do something that gives a more precise, definitely symmetrical result. So first of all, I'm just going to select a, a much brighter color than gray. In fact, if you do do this and it won't let you pick a color for some reason, just go to the color guide on the right or under window and just pick one of these colors on here and it will select it in the color picker and then it will enable you to select color again. I don't know why this happens, but that's just one way I found to get around it. Okay, so we've got our pen tool selected. I'm going to start by left clicking, hold shift to draw a perfectly vertically straight line. And you can do this next line freehand or you can hold shift to snap it to a 45 degree angle and of course this line is so brilliant we're just going to keep shift held and just keep snapping to those vertical lines and those 45 degree angle lines and we'll come up here and we'll complete this shape and the circle next to the pen tool icon indicates that we are now completing the shape now what we're going to do is where we need to try and triangulate this central position because we are going to be creating just two more copies of this arrow at the bottom. So we need to rotate them around this central point here. So we need to find that central point first of all. Well, one way we, way we can do this is by grabbing the pen tool and we'll just left click and draw three lines. 
each down the center of all of these columns. Now it wants to continue this line here, just press escape on the keyboard. And we'll just make sure we give this a color. So let's just swap that fill and stroke so we have a red line. And from the stroke panel, we can decrease the weight as well to 0.5. And I'll do one from this side. And again, escape to stop that line continuation. And we'll do a vertical one as well. So something like this. And of course we can just shift these other two along a little bit, just so they line up with our center line, which we know is exactly where we want it to be. And this is a very approximate way of doing it, but this is a, a great way that you can just get this, get this moving and just create the logo. You can spend a bit more time finessing the details after if you want to. Okay, so we've now marked this central point and we can go into outline mode, which is command or control Y. And we can see we have that central point. In fact, we can grab the pen tool and just mark, zoom in even more. Just mark that with a cross. So we'll go edit, copy, edit, paste in place and just rotate holding shift. And then move both of these lines onto that point where they intersect. Now don't worry if it's not entirely accurate because we are zoomed in at 64,000%. So when we zoom out, it's gonna look pretty good. Now we can come out of outline mode by pressing Command or Control Y. And we can delete these lines now. So let's just select these and press delete or backspace on the keyboard. And we're left with our little cross. Oh, and we can drag over this and from the stroke panel, decrease that weight even more. So we just have that central point. In fact, we're going to lock this now. So let's just go object lock selection, just so we don't select these anchor points by mistake. And what I'm going to do is grab the direct selection tool and just grab this anchor point here and drag it upwards and hold shift as well, just so it doesn't sway to the left or the right. And I want this to snap to the center of the cross we just created. And now once we've done that, we can go object, unlock all, select the cross and hit delete or backspace. And we now know that this anchor point here is in the center of all of these different lines because we've taken the time to triangulate that position. Now, because we unlocked everything, we have unlocked this so we can move this again. So let's just select it and go back to object, lock, selection. And we've created that half of, a, uh, of an arrow. So we can select this now and go to object, transform, reflect, reflect it along the vertical axes and press copy and it creates a copy of that half of an arrow reflected vertically. And we can then hold shift and drag this into position. Now at the moment in outline mode, these are two different shapes. Remember outline mode, command or control Y. And we need to merge these into one shape. So let's left click on this half here, hold shift, left click on the other half, and then go to window down to Pathfinder and select the top left option, Unite. And it combines those together into one shape. Command or Control Y to come out of outline mode. And to be honest, we're pretty much done now. So we can just select this arrow, select the rotation tool, which is R on the keyboard. And then we can just single left click on this anchor point in the center. And you'll see it locks that cyan colored crosshair to the center and we can left click and rotate around this angle now. But we don't want to rotate our original arrow, we just want to create a copy of it. So if we left click and rotate, right up to where we want to be, now I've still got the left mouse button held down, and then hold down Alt you'll see next to my cursor, a second arrow appears. This indicates that we will be creating a copy. So we can match this as closely as we can to the existing logo and let go. 
And if it isn't exactly in position, you can just adjust that rotation just by left clicking and dragging with the rotation tool, that's fine. But ideally, you're gonna get that in one go because what we can do if we do get this in one go, so just left click on that point, drag, hold Alt to create a copy. There is a way in Illustrator that you can repeat your last action. So once you've done that rotation, just press Command or Control D on the keyboard and it repeats that last action. So there we go, we've pretty much created the Unity logo now. If we just zoom in, we get a few of these little inaccuracies here, but nothing to worry about there. All we need to do is grab that direct selection tool, click on these anchor points and just pull that in the middle. Now don't skew it out of line, so we're adjusting the line. We keep the line in line. That's a lot of lines in one sentence, but just pull that into the middle and join those together. So we'll do one over here as well. So you can see I'm dragging it to the right and down, keeping the line in line. This is really confusing. Just into the middle, halfway, either side. So I'll zoom in a bit closer. So you can see I'm not doing this. I'm making sure that I follow the line here exactly and those smart guides are really helpful with that. In fact, we'll do the vertical one first, so we'll go straight up, just halfway, and then drag that one to meet. And it all snaps together beautifully with those smart guides. And there we go, we've pretty much created the Unity logo. Uh, now what we're going to do is just left click and hold shift on all three of these arrows, and go edit, cut. It will remove them from the artboard and copy them to the clipboard. Now we can go object, unlock all. We can drag over the original Unity logo and hit delete or backspace on the keyboard. And then go edit, paste in place. Now again, if we go into outline mode, command or control Y, we can see we have lots of different shapes. But if we drag over everything, go to Pathfinder panel and select Unite, that's the top left option. We can merge all of that into one shape, significantly cleaning it up. And if we come out of outline mode, we can now drag over this, double click the color picker, and the Unity logo color, I believe, is 222C37. That's the six digit hex value that refers to this specific color, which is this one here. And the only other thing to do is to just get the angle right. So if we bring back the original here, we do have this angle. So we'll just lay these on top of each other find the angle so it looks to be around about 32 something like that we've got the angle correct we can delete the example from google images position this back in the center and there we go we're done so those are a few techniques that you can use to create more complex logos by breaking them down, simplifying them, and then using the tools in Illustrator to create those basic shapes that when all combined together, actually create the more complex logo. And there we go. That's how to create the Unity logo in Illustrator with a few techniques thrown in as well about how you can really unpack, that's me unpacking, some more complex logos and just simplify them in your mind. It just makes them so much easier to create. So I really hope you enjoyed this. And a huge thank you to the people who support me on Patreon. There's a link down in the description if you'd like to find out more. But as always, please feel free to...